Boxing King Media. Back here at the BYD showroom in Sheffield, uh, Johnny Nelson, I think you've had like what, three, four weeks with your uh, fancy new motor. Uh, just curious to know how it's been. You know what, I don't know anything about cars, but these guys give me this. I've just come down to say hello. Um, and so I said, you know what, let's meet down here. You want to come to my house? I said, meet me down here. Uh, the car's mad. It's mad. The, 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 I'm not a fast driver. But one, the takeoff is ridiculous. You know, everything about the car, it's just like the technology is second to none. Um, and and, and I had that actually never heard of BYD before. But now I'm like, oh, I, I'm having someone out. Uh, I think I've got three, five people that I know, they sat in it and they thought, I'm, they love it. Lo absolutely love it. Fell in love with it in a heartbeat. Great drive, nice and smooth, beautiful. I've spoken to the um, the main man at the uh, BYD showroom in Sheffield, and basically Ryan, 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 Ryan Smith. Yeah, cool I don't know if he wants to be nice named, guy. but Ryan basically is offering uh, a special discount. Uh, I'm not going to say what it is. I'm going to name it as a mystery discount. Uh, if you're wanting a car on lease, finance, or buy one outright, come down to the showroom, 10 Savile Street in Sheffield. Um, just call. You know what the funny thing is. Yeah? The funny go thing on. is when I'm driving, I see people look at it, and you can see like. And then they'll look again, and then they just watch it drive off. And I'm chuckling, thinking, I'm not even a car guy, but it looks cool. It looks really cool. I'm, uh, I'm all right with it. Well, if you want to join Johnny Nelson, uh, have one of these cars. In, like I said, there's different ways of getting them. But uh, basically, um, just come down and just yeah. quote Boxing King Media uh, to the uh, sales staff, and they're going to sort you out. Oh, uh, full electric, mystery discount. Uh, you know, interesting one the other day, I don't know if you recharged yours yet, Dom recharged his and it said it cost him £19 to get mm. it back to 100%. Mm. So basically you get... 320, 320 on a battery and it's real. <laughs> it's not like 320, as soon as you turn the engine and it drops down to 100. 320 miles you get on a battery. For £19, which is crazy cheap. Yeah. But yeah, um, all, all shout out to uh, BYD for, uh, you know, I mean... Uh, sponsoring the this whole new thing that we've got going off here so i'm going to move on to the boxing because there'll be people out there going i've come here for the boxing but you've got to shout out the people that make it all happen as well um we're going to talk about the 5e5 but i think before we talk about the 5e5 at the weekend I, I want to speak to you about tyson fury first because last time we spoke johnny i think 130,000 people have seen that interview and, and you went in and said he ain't going to take the rematch he's going to walk away from boxing True. it'd be too hard for him to come back from what I've heard from the people within the camp, the first thing he said when he walked here was like, oh, I've got to get this rematch. Um, and it's done now. Uh, signed, sealed for December the 21st. And the mm -hmm. reason for that date is because uh, both men are carrying some injuries from the fight. And uh, and just the way the Riyadh season works, um, that was the date that was available. I think it would have been in November. Uh, I think Fudi and Usyk wanted it in November, but there was no availability. So they're gone for December the 21st. Uh, so what are you saying? I'm sticking to what I'm saying. I think you've not heard this from Tyson Fury's mouth. You've heard it from his people, Frank Warren, Spencer Brown, whoever. And of course, they've got to do the job. This man has gone home and he probably wants to talk nothing about boxing or anything to do with it right now. So the people doing their job are doing their job. They've got to say, yeah, yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. I'm telling you now, I'm talking, you from, talking to you from a fighter's point of view, a fighter's mentality. So no promoter, no, no, no bag man. Nobody, nobody else can tell me how fighters think. Tyson's Fury's head will be fried. And, and, and this guy truly and really believes he is the best. And to get done like he got done, he's either got to fool himself and say, nah, 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 they robbed me. And really believe in the stuff he said after the fight. Or he's going to have to have a serious word himself. Because for this young man to motivate himself to, to, to he's a different breed. You know, for this young man to motivate himself to get back in there, he does not fight for the money. You know, to, he's a fighting man. And it's the one thing he always said all the way through his career, I'm a fighting man. So he's going to think like a fighting man, fight like a fighting man, walk, talk, everything like a fighting man. For him to come back from this fight, unless Osi retires, I just don't see it. So you're saying you don't think if Usyk's ready on that date, Tyson pulls out? Is unless Usyk retires, I don't see Tyson Fury fighting. But why would he... Uh, why would they do this publicly? Because they would have agreed the time. Because takes. they've got to take it to the wire, man. How many times is how many times is okay? The first time they should have boxed. What happened? Did happen. Cool. You know, and, 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 and fights get pushed back. They get pushed back. Get pushed back. Tyson is the boss. It doesn't matter what his PR people around are saying. Tyson is the boss. 
So if Tarzan said, I ain't playing, you don't care about the consequences. He's the boss. Everyone else is just doing their job. So what are you basing that opinion on that, that you think he won't fight Usyk on that date? Or what's that based on solely? I, I'm basing it on the effect it will have on him mentally, emotionally. He's going to watch that fight. He's going to think, you know what, I trained hard, I did everything right. What more can I do? I can't gonna let this little jumped up middleweight, gap teeth middleweight do that to me. And he did it. What if he does it again? What, the, what can I change? I told you before this, you know, in the, in the camp, there's too many yes men. And look, listen, you see, you talk about what you saw. You saw in your corner, three people shouting at him, shouting at him. There was no calm, no cool in it because he had three instructions, blam, blam, blam. Does that, does that not reflect how things had been in camp. You've got too many people telling you to do, to do too many different things. Tyson Fury is, a, is the best fighter, not the best boxer. But, as, but mixing his fight with his boxer and his size and his physicality, that's what made him so successful and, and in, in, in being the top, being the best heavyweight in the world. That's what's made him. So what did he do? He did a, Brendan calls it three smart. I might be too smart for you, but he outsmarted himself. I'm gonna try and, outsm I'm gonna try and outbox the boxer. And he got dealt with. And, 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 and to, to prove that, again, it's, it's a matter of opinion. The first three rounds, uh, Usyk put it on him, he boxed him, but got the better of him. Rounds four to round eight, Tyson started to use his physicality and everything with it, was, and he was getting the better of, of, of Usyk. And I've never seen Usyk in such trouble regarding, in, in, in all his fights. And then when Tyson got clipped in nine, then what happens? He, he's boxing, the rounds are shared. If he'd have used his physicality, Use everything, his fighting ability, his boxing ability, and everything with it, he'd have, he'd have dealt with uh, Usyk. And you saw when the pressure was on. But it's about tactics, it's about people that, uh, that, that tell him so many different things, getting so many conflicting information, so much conflicting information. Now, I don't care if, if it's not popular, what I'm saying, I ain't got a problem with that. What I'm saying to you is I know how fighters think. I know what goes in in the gym. You know, you can, and you can tell how it reflects. You can tell how a fight is dealing with situations. You can tell in all the build up to the fight. You can tell in the fight itself when you've got three people, blah, 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 blah. What's that about? You know, that's just like, I'm starting to think, nah, just calm it down. Because that's everybody else's nerves and panic being deflecting onto him. Fascinating. Um, so if, if, say, we're fight week, it's December the 17th, 18th, we're going into fight week. Yeah. Hopefully. When we get uh, that close. You may be there as well for Sky Sports are covering we'll it. We'll be getting that close. If we get that close, well, I'm, I'm definitely going to dig up this conversation. Dig it up, man. Dig it up. Dig it up. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm prepared to actually say, all right, I was wrong. Dig it up. Let's see. When I heard it, I'm like, nah, yeah, that ain't happening. Interesting. Let's, let's see what happens uh, on that front. Um, with regards to the 5v5, I'm guessing you watched all the fights. Wicked. Uh, you know what? What a bill. Bad. What a bill. From start to finish, what a bill. I was so happy for, for, for all the winners, you know, and I just thought, damn, you know, it was Willie Hutchinson, you know, he, this guy used to train at our gym and, and, and he reminded me of a guy, some of you might not remember the historians will, of a guy called Tony Booth from Hull. Tony Booth, I can remember, he boxed Junior in his last amateur fight. Was it Junior or, or I can't remember boxing last amateur fight and Tony Booth, Brendan saw me said, we want that guy there. He's like a white Ali. He was slick. He was unorthodox. Everything he did. And, and, and pe because Tony Bull's hunger, his attitude to it was, a, was not as professional as it should have been, he underachieved. Willie, I know Willie. And Willie, again, you saw Willie there. This kid can fight. He can, no, he, this kid can box and box well. And that was the last thing anybody expected from, from Willie Hutchinson. And I just thought he did a good job. Because um, I thought Spider... You know, Spider, he's, 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 he's on a roll, he's rolling through. But then when I see him, I'm thinking, oh my God, I forgot. You know, this guy's, he's, he's a, this guy's a confident handful. I think most people expected, and um, this was the only fight on the card, most people thought uh, matching would have been easy. Um, that, that's what most people are saying. The other four, they were undecided. Yeah. They were saying, Willie will come unstuck in the middle rounds and he'll get stopped because he's not yeah. been past round seven. Um, there's obviously a lot of, uh, did you watch all the uh, drama in the fight week build up between the two as well? Uh, no, I didn't. But you know what? But trust me. Again, we're talking about boxing foreplay. That's how Willie plays that game. He plays it great. So the drama is part of getting into your opponent's head, twisting him up, getting him emotionally invested. 
So, so, it, so I didn't, you know, but the fight itself, you know, I looked at it, I thought, he's got your number. He's pickpocketed you. And uh, he did a good job. He's now been made mandatory to fight uh, Joshua Boatsy. A big, big step up from obviously on his own account, Willie's not really beaten anyone that people know names wise. So Craig was his first real test. So he's now beaten Craig on, you know, on the judges' scorecards. He's done it better than Bivol, Boatsy. And now he's been chucked straight into a Boatsy fight. Too soon or is it just the right no, the, the, the problem with Willie is, is the fact that probably the people know that the talent that he's got, they've wanted it more than he has. Stuff that's gone out on outside the ring has, has made him underachieve in his career. He's a good fighter. And if he can get his head in place and get the right attitude on the guy can be a handful and you'll underestimate him. You will not realise the boxing skill he has uh, to match the character and the confidence he has. But he's just got to want it as much as everybody else. He has the ability uh, to go in there and give everybody a good run for the money, if not pick a pocket him. Uh, but he's got to... It's frustrating because I've seen, you know, I saw him when he was in the gym, you know, and people frustrated think, come on, man. You know, we know you can see you've got it. And I think he needed that on Saturday night. Good on him. Congratulations to him. He got the ball rolling for Frank Ball and then Nick Ball came in and ripped the title away from yeah. uh, Ray, Ray Ford. Good uh, fight, Nick. Good fight. Good, Nick. Yeah, good fight. Yeah, I just saw, and I saw Nick Ball on the... I think it was the Joshua Undercard. On looking and, at him in the WBC. Such a nice... He's a gentleman hide, man. Such a nice kid, but he can fight. You look at him, you look at the signs of him, but his style of fight is ridiculous. Um, He's such a friendly scouser as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, so, again, well-deserved. He's a grafter. He's an honest pro. One of the things he said to me, because he was in the same hotel, and he said to me that the 10-20% the I had left in the tank in the Fort, uh, Vargas fight, I'm going to make sure I empty that completely. And maybe that was the difference in making mm. sure he got, got the decision. Yeah. Did you agree with the decision? Oh yeah, I did without a doubt. I, I and, and looking at, it, I just looked. I thought, Eddie, man, you got you got flipped. You got fl every one of your fights got flipped. Uh, but then you know what? This it's, it's the game. It's the business they're in. And Frank, he's all he's wise, old head. Um, he he picked his five. Eddie picked his five. So the one thing you can't buy, borrow, pretend to have is experience. And then, uh, that's what, what what Frank probably had. All, that, that's what not probably had over Eddie. Hamza Shiraz comes out next, uh, on paper, a shootout between two young guns who both undefeated. Neither of them on paper have beaten someone where you, it, there was always a reason, like the Liam Williams name was the big name on Hamza's record, but mm. they were saying, our oh, Liam's was, you know, his time was over. That's what people are saying. And then Amo, they were saying there's no real names that stand out. So it was a case of, we're going to find out who who's the best out of these. Yeah, someone, and someone had to be or catapulted into the public's um, eyeballs and then Hamza did that job. I'd heard so many things about him um, <clears throat> in camp. I thought, I've got to see this to believe it. And he did a, he did a good job. Hamza told me after the fight that Amo had one punch knockout power. Uh, he goes, he felt it. And because of that, he, he was coach, gave him the right instructions to just keep it behind the jab and just break him down slowly. Uh, what did you make of him actually doing that as just as a young fighter in that situation where he was a captain, so the pressure was on him to get a knockout? Showed maturity. Um, uh, it showed... Um, the right attitude it showed one growth uh, as a fighter if he's doing this at this stage you know but the, his potential is 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 ridiculous um but I, I think he handled it well yeah as you know like from different communities we get fighters that kind of represent certain communities and end up becoming role models um there's obviously quite a few uh, people for, like from the british pakistani and british asian backgrounds um where do you think hamza kind of sits with regards to that pack of generation of fighters. So now he's put himself in the spotlights, how he conducts himself out the ring, not just in the ring. He can inspire people from where his performance is in the ring. And, and I, I can think of loads of good fighters that were just not good role models outside of the ring. So it's how he conducts himself, how, he's in, how he inspires um, uh, others coming through. And if he does it right, he could be an amazing role model. So at that point, uh, Frank's Definitely not losing the 5v5. He's got six points on the table. Yeah. So Eddie at that point needs uh, Hergovic and Wilder both to win by a knockout. Hergovic, Dubois, a handful of people were picking Dubois to win that I fight. Did. Did you, no, I did. No, no, no. Sorry, I picked, I, 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 I didn't. Hergovic, I picked Hergovic. Hergovic. You did. But Dom, I uh, spoke to Dom earlier. Dom actually got four out of the fight, uh, five right. The only fight he got wrong was Raymond Ford and Nick Ball. Um, and he, and he, he called Dubois to win by a knockout. We've never seen that type of Dubois before. On the front foot. 
You, you know, you know what? I think I think Don Charles is. You've got to give props to Don Charles because this guy's a good coach. Unfortunately, he's not had the right fighter to for people to see how much of a good coach he is. Did you watch his interview by any chance? Uh, I didn't watch. That's his exactly what he said. Oh, right. uh, yeah. um, and 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 that's a pro And I've always said it to Don. I said, Don, you're a good coach, man. You just need the right materials to work with. Uh, and I think. With Daniel, I've, I've always doubted Daniel because Daniel's maturity is, 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 you know, performances. I think he might not be the one that that showcases your talent, your skill, done. But on that night, he matured in every possible way: uh, desire, want, persistence, pace. Because um, uh, Her Hergrich, he, he switches off now and again um, in, in fights, but he's still a handful. He's still he's still got that that arrogance, that stubbornness about him. And Daniel beat it out of him. He beat it out to the to the point where he beat Maman's desire out of the fight. The pace was great. It was like a, a mini Tyson s constantly rolling, trying to put him under pressure. So I think how he dealt with that, uh, brilliant. I think. Uh, Don was telling him to use the double jab, you know, made sure he got the focus of, of, of Daniel. Daniel listened to me, spoke to him, you know, spoke to him on, listen to me, pay attention. I know Daniel was being distract, distracted by his dad at ringside and, and, and others at ringside, but he, but Daniel's the kind of guy you've got to get him to zone in and to believe in himself as well as to believe in you. I think in doing that, I know, I gather Daniel's dad is, is, a, is, a, is a positive, strong force were within Daniel's life is it when it comes to him believing in himself it was also a distraction and and maybe uh, fight night he needed his dad barking at him to think I better get this done right hopefully now after that fight Daniel will know what he's capable of doing uh, and he's not he's still a young heavyweight he's still a young heavyweight that's learning on the job and so in our sport unfortunately people think that once you lose you're done you know, and you're going to go for ups and downs. And like, listen, I, I, when he boxed Usyk, I thought, my man's his heart. you got to question his heart. And, and, and many times I thought, he, has he got the heart for it? Has he got the heart for it? When the pressure's on, he breaks up. Saturday night, he, cho he showed maturity. He grew, he grew up. At times when he thought, you know what, I can quit here. He didn't. I thought, excellent work by Don in the corner. Uh, he, fought, he honed in on this young man. And, uh, and great maturity. Uh, for for Daniel, yeah, I was looking at his last four fights. Kevin Lirana, that win's so underrated because Kevin's a really good yeah. fighter. He gave Justin Huni a really hard fight. Usyk, obviously, it was it wasn't a nip and tuck fight, but he obviously lost. But he gave Usyk a decent fight. Gerald Miller, he people expected Gerald Miller yeah. to stop him and expected him to. The Gerald him. Miller fight, I always said Gerald Miller not being tested. He's the loudest man in the room, but don't mean he's the best. And this is why he talked himself into that position. So I kind of expected, I didn't, I didn't know what to expect in regards to Gerald Miller. I didn't expect him to turn over Daniel. I'd expect him to out talk him, out, out, out fox him and try and get in his head. But, but Daniel exposed Miller uh, for who he is, the fighter is. Nice guy, but, but Daniel exposed the hustle. Um, and again, he's just had to learn on the job and he's been consistent enough to stick at it, stick at it, to stick at it, to get into this position where he's at. I'm going to come back to Daniel. Deontay Wilder, uh, is it the end of the road for Deontay Wilder? It was the end of the road for Deontay Wilder when he boxed Tyson Fury the first time. It was officially the end of the road for Don Deontay Wilder when he got knocked out against Tyson Fury the last time. So now it's about the hustle because you're looking at Tyson Fury and everybody's thinking, you know, they're not seeing it. You know, Tyson ex ex exploited and, ex and exposed him to the max. So when we saw him on Saturday night, even before, look at it, I said, no, no, he loses. He's gone, he's done, he's not the fighter he was. He's not the fighter he was. I don't know what he does outside his life, but I know, I know that he's nowhere near the fighter he was. And he looked the older man. He looked 15 stone. You know, he always looked, in his, in his height, he always looked powerful, dangerous, you know, scary. But he just looked like a skinny old man. And he got beaten by an older man. And, and, and he realised that I saw at one point, Zhele uh, Zheng whacked him in the body. You could see my man fell, and you just felt the power and the weight of it, you know. And, and, and so, and Wilder had to depend, he needed some boxing ability. He's got boxing ability, but he's not got world-class boxing ability. He's got world-class punching power, but not world-class boxing ability. So when you're going against somebody that's bigger than you, that can box better than you, that can take your shots and walk you down, that's when you're going to get exposed. So, so would this have happened two or three years ago? It would have been a lot more hairy, 
But the Auntie Wilder had done from what, 20, October 2021. He was done then. It was been a hustle up to that point there, from then. What does this do for Eddie Hearn? Long rivalry, it's well talked about, the Warrens and the Hearns. The fact that it wasn't even close on paper, it was 10 nil on point, 5 nil on the night. Don't pay no mind to that. Don't pay no mind to that at all. You know, I do, and I'll always say, Frank Warren was the best promoter in the UK. Eddie is the best promoter in the world. Frank Warren is a, a, a very experienced promoter that used to be top dog. Eddie is a promoter that you'll see him one day in Kuala Lumpur, next day you'll see him in Bradford, next day you'll see him in Miami, next day you'll see him in Leeds. This guy is a grafter. And to me, I think he could, he could, as I've said it before, he could talk his way out of a shooting bullet coming in his direction. So you look at the result of that. Let's look at the, 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 uh, the fighters and who, which fight, you know, so Eddie will have signed these fighters up for this tournament. So Eddie's, Eddie's bread and butter fighters, you know, we'll see. Frank, put your bread and butter fighters in with Eddie's bread and butter fighters. I think Frank's a wiser one because you can't buy that. But I think... Don, it, Don said something about building fighters. He said Frank's an expert at building them and then gambling on them at the right time. And he, mm. thought, and he said, in Dom's words, that that's wisdom. Eddie that's experience. Gambles earlier. Yeah, and, 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 and most of Eddie's gambles have paid off. Uh, and that's, that's why Eddie's worldwide. He's like Matchroom Mexico, Matchroom. That's why he's worldwide. You know, at that level, you know, nobody's done that. Here or abroad, nobody has ever done that. So I think, how does that reflect on Eddie? Um, I don't think it does. I really don't. Uh, I think it was a great show. I think it was glad that glad, I was glad that Turkey managed to boom get these boys in and get them working together. I'm glad that 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 if you're a fight fan, it was such a night of boxing and uh, and and it was good. It's good. But in regards to what does that say about Eddie and Frank, don't say not to me. Does it prove anything for me beside? Nah, nah it, show, it shows time? it shows Frank's the wiser one, and you get that with time and experience. It shows, and, and you know, Eddie just got his ass spanked saying, all right, I'll come back again. And I keep watching these two, and I keep watching them thinking, who's going who's gonna to triple up first? You know, so you've won a battle. Now let's see how this war turns out. Last thing I want to speak about, I said I'll come back to Daniel Dubois. So now <clears> Big <throat> Tokyo is September 21st, uh, Wembley. Anthony Joshua, Dubois, and there's a good chance it'll be for the IBF uh, title, not the interim title, mm -hmm. if, if they do strip Usyk. Um, this new Dubois that we've seen in the last few fights has just comes forward, throwing a lot of punches, taking punishment and giving loads more back. And we've seen Anthony Joshua just lay out two men back to back. So what, what do you think? I'm actually excited more for the press conference because I think Dan will have some lines. No, no, I think the press conference will be very respectful. I think the build-up to this is going to be very hard because... Well, Dan told me he'll demolish AJ in the post-fight. Okay, all right. So, so Daniel... Let's be honest, Daniel is not the, the greatest of talkers and, 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 and AJ's respectful when he has to be. Um, you've got two guys that are, are going to put it on there. If you think you're going to see any fireworks in the build-up, you ain't. If you're a fight fan, wait for the fight. That's where the exc excitement happens. Um, I think AJ will have too much for Daniel. He's too correct in his punch power. Uh, uh, as I said, let the shots go. I think, I think Daniel gets hit. And AJ can hit, um, and so let's just say if AJ underestimates Daniel, then then he makes a mistake he's made twice before in his career. I don't think he will because Daniel hits too hard to to take lightly. Uh, it's a good fight. Well, looking at uh, punch stats and records, I mean Daniel's only Usyk obviously didn't stop Usyk, uh, and then um, Joyce, but other than that, he's he stopped every man he's fought. I'm just comparing the punch power. Hergovic took loads of punishment off Zhang. Zhang wasn't able to stop him, and Hergovic was like on his last legs in a lot of that fight. And Zhang's known to be a big puncher, but Dubois literally broke him down, mm. bust his face up, stopped him on cuts. Um, obviously, a great age is a big puncher. So, are you underestimating Dubois' punch power? In oh, that not fight? at all. Not at all. Uh, not at all. But I, 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 I'm understanding the danger in an, an unform Anthony Joshua. An unformed Anthony Joshua is a world beater. Is um, Dubois unformed though? Pardon? Is Dubois unformed as well? Dubois, you know, he's, 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 he's flying up there to, to say, right, well, I'm starting to believe myself. So when you've got the best, the best performance from both fighters in the ring against each other, what would you say? So, so Saturday, I'd say, was the best performance I've seen from Daniel Dubois. You know, we've seen 
excellent performances from, from AJ. If these two guys turn up respecting each other and bring their best, I say AJ has too much in the locker for, for, for Daniel. Pressure, um, 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 uh, cunningness, game plan, uh, concentration, when it's on form. Uh, so I'd expect AJ to get the job done. Um, again, Don Charles are great, you know, when it comes to tactics and get the job done. He's, he's, he's now got someone that's put him on the map in regards to Daniel, so people know who he is. I just think AJ will just have a little bit too much for him. I think years ago there was rumours of them two sparring each other and I, I don't want to be misquoted, but I'm pretty sure there was, again, rumours these are, that Dubois had better other spars. Any of that stuff? You know, sparring don't mean diddly. I got, I got battered in sparring by guys I knocked out in fights. Um, well, so, Hergovic was a perfect example of that. Yeah, exactly. So, so sparring doesn't mean deadly because you know you're going through emotions. You're, you're just sharpening your tools. You're learning something about yourself. Thinking, I'll do that tomorrow. I'll do this tomorrow. Sparring's nothing. Um, when you've got to get your fight, your, 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 your game head on, your fight head on. That's where that's where it shows. And and AJ's been consistent ninety seven percent of the time in, in getting that done. I think the wildest thing is most people expect the next time we see two British heavyweights in a heavyweight title fight would be Fury and AJ, but it mm. looks like it's going to be Dubois and AJ. Isn't it funny how it all turned out? Because originally this this was should have been AJ against Wilder. Wilder's now out of the picture, gone. Uh, Fury, you know, questionable as far as I'm concerned. AJ's still the last man standing, you know. And, and again, you know, and you, you've got to give it to him. He's been, he's stuck at it when he's been... When he's been dug out, you know, he's stuck at it. He's, he's put the blinkers on and I've dug him out. You know, it doesn't mean that I'm, I've dug him out. You're calling it out. You, you call people's bullshit. And so, but he's stuck at it. And it's like, oh, I, you know, I'm doing this for me. And slowly but surely, he's, he's getting himself back on track. So, right, I'm here. Look at who's left. Look at everybody around. Look what's happened to you. Look, what, look how I did with Usyk. You look at what's happened to you. And that, so now, he's, he, that confidence, that self-belief, that, that 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 experience from the old dips and downs of his career have now started to come together. Fascinating. I think by December twenty second, the heavyweight pictures it could be it could be flipped completely. Completely, complete, completely. Uh, so yeah. Um, so I think the main thing I took from this is you reckon Tyson Fury is not going to take that rematch. So that that'll be interesting. And um, sit see. If... Listen, I, I, listen. I know it doesn't go down too well. And again, you're going to have people coming and saying Nelson's a, a Tyson a Fury. Hit. No, I'm not. I just call out bullshit. I know you've had it before with yeah. AJ when you've made negative, but I'm yeah. going to call it negative, but yeah. people take him as negative. Yeah, 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 that's AJ. what I'm saying. I'm thinking, I don't know these people personally enough to, 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 to not like them. I'm just going to say what I think. And, and nine times out of ten, we look, at, we look now what's gone on and look, look how it's turned out. I've not been wrong. So, so in regards to, to Tyson Fury, you know, I'm looking at the performance of the Tyson Fury who looked in unbelievable condition. I'm looking at Tyson Fury had an unbelievable training camp who went out there to get a job done. He couldn't do everything. He couldn't do anything else. There's nothing else he can go do. So now, and if he really believes he won that fight, if he really believes, you know what, that won't happen again, I can fix this. And, and, and remember, he's a historian. He knows the fight game. This man quoted, you know, smaller guys fighting bigger guys. It can't happen. He's, he knows the game inside out. So those bullshitters in his ear tell him, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. We'll just tell him it's going to happen. We'll turn it as he gets close to fight. That's what they're telling you and everybody else. And Tyson Fury might take, talk to Tyson Fury and say, sit down, say it, say it. We'll see how you feel as he gets close to fight. Let's have this conversation yep. when, he do, when it doesn't happen. Let's look forward to that. Johnny, as always, it's been a pleasure. Uh, shout out again to the BYD showroom for allowing us to use their uh, showroom to do this interview. Again, I think we're going to have to make this my second home while uh, while we're rolling. Thank you very much, Johnny. Sweet.